.NET 6, VS Code updates, WinApp SDK, and Xbox at 20. All this and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome everyone to This Week on Channel. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Welcome to The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate, and that's right. We are back. After almost a year away, we are back. Now, longtime viewers might know that I used to have a weekly show called This Week on Channel 9 that covered the latest tech news and happenings for developers, IT pros, and people who just like to nerd out with code. Then the pandemic happened and we became bi-weekly. And then I think there was like an attempt at a live thing. I don't really know. Then there was nothing. Suffice to say, as Channel 9 regulars have seen, all that great Channel 9 content is now on Learn TV, as well as our YouTube channels. So, with the new network, we decided that it was time for a new name, some new graphics, maybe some new segments. So, uh, but what hasn't changed is the core part of the show. It's still me cruising through hundreds of blogs, project updates, trying to bring you the most important and interesting news of the week. It's kind of like new Coke, except this is not going to be a disaster. I promise, I promise. All right. So, welcome to the download. Let's do this thing. There was so much cool news from the last few weeks that I couldn't cover it all. So let's focus on some of the big highlights. First up is the release of .NET 6. Now, this is a major milestone release. Not only is it a long-term support release, meaning that it'll get support for three years, .NET 6 is a unified platform, allowing browser, cloud, desktop, IoT, and mobile to use the same .NET libraries and to share code easily. It's even native on Apple Silicon Macs, which is awesome. And in addition to some huge performance gains, it also includes some really great new features like Hot Reload, better security, as well as C Sharp 10 and F Sharp 6. Look, I could go on and on, but honestly, that would be the entire show. So check out the show notes in the description in the links below to check out the announcement blog that lays everything out. And be sure to check out all the sessions from .NET Conf 2021, which took place last week. And if you missed it, never fear, .NET Conf 2021 uh, had tons of amazing video content highlighting everything new and cool with .NET 6. And in the show notes in the links below, you can access our YouTube playlist to watch the entire conference on demand, if in case you missed anything. Uh, and you can also check out the conference's GitHub repo where there are presentations and demo code. So all that stuff is linked down below. Next up, alongside .NET 6, is a brand new version of Visual Studio. That's right, Visual Studio 2022 is here and it is awesome. Now this is the first 64-bit release of Visual Studio, which is really exciting. And Visual Studio includes some really great new features like Hot Reload for both C++ and .NET 6. It's got web live preview, there's a preview of cross-platform testing on Linux and more. So you can check out the show notes and the description for the announcement blog, as well as the Visual Studio 2022 landing page that has some additional videos and documentation from the Visual Studio 2022 launch event. And for the Mac users out there, Visual Studio 2022 for Mac is now available in Preview 3, and the team has announced that it is hard at work on native support for Apple Silicon. So again, check out the show notes and the links down below for more details. Speaking of new stuff, WinApp SDK 1.0 is now available. Now, this was previously known as Project Reunion, and it basically represents the next evolution in the Windows app development platform. So the Windows app SDK is a unified set of APIs and tools that can be used in a consistent way to any desktop app on Windows 11, and uh, it'll even downlevel to Windows 10 version 1809. Now, this is not a replacement for the Windows SDK or other existing desktop app types like WinForms or WPF. And so kind of think about it like it's been designed to complement those existing tools and app types, uh, but had, now there's a common set of APIs the developers can rely on across Windows. It's really, really exciting stuff, and um, I've got links in the show notes in the description down below for the release notes, the docs, and the GitHub repo. Next up, in some Visual Studio Code news, we've got two major announcements. First, is that notebook support is now a core part of VS Code. Now, this has been building um, and improving for quite some time, but the team just put out a really in-depth blog post about how it works, so I wanted to take some time to talk about it. 
The TLDR is that there are now no notebook APIs in VS Code that let extension developers create their own notebook experiences. And this is huge because in the past, notebooks were isolated to like their own web view within VS Code. But now, there are notebook APIs, so extensions can interact with the rest of VS Code and other extensions as well. So check out the blog post linked in the show notes and the description for more examples. There's also some guidance on how to get started, and there's a look at the ecosystem that is just starting to grow. Next, and even more great VS Code news, is a preview version of VS Code uh, that now works in your web browser. That's right, just go to vscode.dev, and you'll get a lightweight version of VS Code running in your browser. And you can open a folder on your local machine, and you can start coding. It's really, really cool. Now, there are some limitations with the browser-based version, so not all features or extensions are going to work. But this is a really terrific experience, especially for people who might be using something like a Chromebook or an iPad that doesn't have a native, native VS Code app. Um, and it also integrates really easily with both GitHub and Azure DevOps. And so I love this. This is a ton of fun. I've got a link in the show notes and the description with more information, as well as a link to the live stream from the announcement that took place last month. Now, I mentioned GitHub a couple of seconds ago, and next up, GitHub has released its annual State of the Octaverse Developer Report. Now, some of the highlights uh, include uh, the news that JavaScript, to the surprise of no one, remains the most popular language on GitHub. And there were actually 61 million new GitHub repos created in the last year, and 170 million pull requests were merged. But there's a ton of great insights um, for both companies, uh, for OSS projects, and for individuals. So I encourage you to check out the whole thing at the link down below. Next, I just wanted to highlight a quick new feature that is in WSL2 on Windows 11. And that's the ability to mount Linux um, EXT4 disks directly. This is really cool. So this means that if you have any existing Linux disk or partition, you can mount it directly from WSL2. And this is primarily for internal disks, though it does already support external USB drives and VHDs. Uh, there are a couple of other limitations. Right now, it doesn't support SD or flash drives. And you need to mount the entire disk so your Linux drive needs to be separate from your boot device. But this is still super, super exciting for WSL fans, and it makes working with Linux devices and drives in Windows even easier. And just to note that if you are running Windows 11, be sure to check out the WSL2 preview in the Microsoft Store, because this will let you get newer versions of WSL2 faster without having to wait for big OS updates. So I've got links in the, the description down below to the docs explaining ext4 support for WSL2, as well as a blog post about the preview version in the Microsoft Store. And so that's all in the links down below. And now it is time for my pick of the week. So as you can see from my shirt, 20 years ago this week, the Xbox made its triumphant debut alongside everyone's favorite game, Halo, Master Chief. 20 years later, the Xbox has had a massive impact on gaming as we know it, and the Xbox team had a ton of news around its anniversary, including more games in Game Pass, some additional OG Xbox titles that have received backward compatibility, yes, and uh, some new retro-themed accessories, which, yes, I obviously bought. And uh, there's even an upcoming documentary that'll air next month. So I also wanted to point out that if you want a good read, uh, GQ Magazine UK had a really great profile and interview with Mr. Xbox himself, Phil Spencer, along with the, some of the other team members to talk about the history of the console and where gaming is going in the future. All right, well, that does it for me and for this inaugural episode of the download. If you like this episode, please give us a like on YouTube. Our dislikes are still visible until YouTube takes it all away, so dislike if that's your jam. And uh, please leave comments about your favorite Xbox memories or thoughts on any of the other stories that we covered this week. And go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer on YouTube for all of your nerd needs, and be sure to check out even more great content right here on Learn TV. See you next time.